This week on the Lazy Geeks Podcast, how many Harley Quinn movies do we need? PS2 dashboard coming to PS4, return to World War Hulk, nothing nostalgia for iHeartRadio, and our Christmas gift recommendations. Sabrina going to Netflix, Microsoft broadening approach, DC looking past Rebirth, and Voyager lives. <laughs> and fucking up lives, too. <laughs> Keep going. I finished my line, you Voyager. Finished? Yeah. <laughs> and we're not talking about Star Trek Voyager, by the way. No. I'm Stephen Vargas. I'm Adam Riley, and this is the Lazy Geeks Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I did that on purpose. Welcome to the Lazy Geeks Podcast, our weekly podcast that discusses top news from the world of entertainment, gaming, comics, and technology. This is for the week of December 5th, 2017. Also, we have a a, a news breaking. <laughs> shut up. We have a news breaking fucking thing that Steve is a piece of shit for stepping on both my fucking lines. What was that? <laughs> You know what? That's that's the show. Okay. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, um, welcome everybody. This is our first show since our Thanksgiving break. Hope you guys checked out last week's rewind. Uh, that was a little crazy of a rewind. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to that shit twice. <laughs> I listened to that. And then I look stupid as fuck because I'm laughing my ass off, right? right. And people are like, "What are you listening to?" I'm like, "A podcast." Like, what podcast? Like, my podcast. Like, are you making yourself laugh? <laughs> and I go, but yeah, but it's like me from like six years ago. <laughs> right. So it's like a different person. And they're like, uh huh, you're crazy. <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm fucking funny. <laughs> I know. I'm listening to it too. And I'm like, going, wow. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm like sitting there listening to it. And I start laughing. And, you know, my brother's like, what are you laughing at? I'm like, I was doing an old podcast that Adam and I did. And he just looks at me and I'm like, we're funny. This shit's funny. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't laugh at yourself you know what i mean exactly just... <laughs> i mean it's it's funny it's funny too because i'm listening to it and we we do sound like different people like the way we're talking and stuff yeah. like that i'm like oh shit this is the most racist sexist i think episode we've ever done well, that's um <laughs> and that was the first because, 45 minutes <laughs> that's because the world has uh has changed since has kicked us in the ass a little bit more, you know? <laughs> right. We sounded so more optimistic back then. <laughs> right. And just outraged by things. And now it's like, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> After seven years of doing this, you're kind of like, all right, whatever. <laughs> it's just going to happen again. So why cry about <laughs> exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> it is funny, though, when you listen to the rewinds and you're kind of like, wow, we're still kind of talking about the same shit, you know, except right. for Christina Aguilera getting arrested, you know, but um, for being a passenger. <laughs> I know that was so stupid. <laughs> but you know, hey, that's 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 uh that's life in the podcasting. But world, back I then, guess. back then, I thought she got arrested for being fucking hot. <laughs> God, she was so hot. I mean, she's still attractive. You know, she's just older. But I mean, when I was younger and she was younger, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> when you when she was genie in a bottle. <laughs> past that i'm talking dirty you know what i'm talking about <laughs> right. too dirty to clean my act up <laughs> Jeez. oh man so this is the oh yeah and um you probably notice in this show notes we're not talking about the uh avengers trailer that's all in just another podcast that we released on friday so uh if you if you haven't listened to that one you fucking up you straight fucking yeah. up that's really and i ain't gonna I, I ain't talking about the same shit twice right right even we though say- I do that constantly, but you know, <laughs> we save that for the rewinds. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so we finally hit that uh, holiday hall. This is where got to do, you know, people got if everybody's schedule gets a lot tighter around the holidays between now and yep. Christmas. And you know, when you got people like Adam wor- working, you know, 70 hours a day, dude, you know, for the next listen. two weeks. So let me real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there. I have tomorrow, which is Monday the fourth, as as we're recording, is the, is the beginning of 
um, a pay period for one of my checks. I'm sure everyone understands what a fucking pay period is. If you don't <laughs> get a job. Um, so I am, it's the check right before Christmas, which sucks in its own way because my Chris, Christmas shopping is going to be done the weekend before Christmas. <laughs> I'm going to have to go out with brass knuckles. Motherfucker. Right. You know, you know, how we get it. Going to be so, dressed like fucking, uh, uh, Gerard Butler in 300. <laughs> right. I'm just going to walk in there and I'm going to immediately yell at the door. If anyone gets in my fucking way, <laughs> dressed like the, but, Punisher. um, the good thing is, is when you shop, this is the trick. When you shop the weekend before Christmas, and sometimes, look, some people procrastinate, but sometimes the checks don't sync up. Like, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Um, I, I also probably could have hustled in November <laughs> <laughs> on the overtime, but whatever. Um, never go looking for a specific thing. Just know what the people you're buying for like, like their characters that they like or whatever, and then get something that syncs with that. If you're not going to find that hot new toy, You'll be fine. It's right. when you're going like, remember the Tickle Me Elmo fucking Oh, here. Jesus. Yeah. Everybody was beating each other's ass for this stupid mechanical doll. I was in. Uh, anyway. I, I remember I was in Northern California at the time. I was working at this mall over there. A little, little shoe store. And I remember getting ready to open. And this one, the one KB toy store was getting a new stock of Tickle Me Elmo. And the line went down the mall out the back door. Yeah. I'm like, fuck you people, man punch a tickle me i'm on the face yeah so what i'm doing this is my plan on my pay period i'm working 12 hours a day and eight hours on saturday which is roughly not exactly but roughly 70 hours a week. i'm ending this with a three-day weekend which is good <laughs> <laughs> and and, but, prob and probably just sleeping straight through <laughs> right so i'm going to be hustling this fucking overtime so those I'm of you that listen that, those of you that those of you that are listening to the show by the way you'd be able to to measure adam's temperament over the next two shows <laughs> no, you'll be able to measure my sanity you know what's funny is it's really not that difficult now it used to be more difficult because of the job i had was much higher stress but i'm in a new position now where i pretty much just put my headphones on all day and i just do my work it's a more complicated job but I know how to do it and no one bothers me. So it's kind of cool. I, I've watched fucking Netflix. You know, I got the unlimited on the phone, of course, you know, mm -hmm. so we watch Netflix, YouTube, whatever. And I'm kind of just chilling. Yeah, Pornhub premium. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'm kind of just chilling while I'm working, listen to podcast music, whatever. So it's not going to be as bad. I'll be tired, but I won't be like, fuck this fucking bullshit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sure I will be at the end. Um, yeah, you <laughs> but I'll tell you, I'll tell you like this, and I don't. I'm mind so that. glad they make strict gun control laws. <laughs> I'm gonna make, and I'm exempt on the taxes. My American listeners, you already know, motherfucker. At least for now. At least for now. December, you you go exempt. We we don't fuck around. Okay, actually, I've i yeah I've been exempt since November. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we making money over here. Okay. But then I have the seven hundred dollar insurance thing that comes out every fucking check. That's fun. <laughs> well, at least but, for now, until that new uh, tax bill goes in the. Yeah, then it'll be twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I went to that calculator they put up, and it says I'm gonna save eight hundred dollars a year on taxes. Well, it's because weird because they said they were gonna take out the child exemption. Well, that I'm not talking about that. Oh. I'm talking about. Um, like just um, straight right yeah. and if they take out the child exemption they can't take it out for this year this year already fucking happened who knows <laughs> they re they'll, be, they'll fuck me i'll be owing the irs some money <laughs> <laughs> but uh i don't know i need to pay attention to the tax code now because i'm an adult yeah. uh what are you gonna do yeah what are you gonna do uh oh um uh those of you that live in la i'm not sure if the if there are any more tickets available, but this last weekend at the West Beverly theater out in, um, out in Hollywood, they released tickets for a Christmas Eve double feature die hard and die hard too. Nice. And, uh, you know, the six were only eight bucks and with their, you know, online fee, it came out to like $9 and 36 cents for a double feature. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> I don't remember the last time I ever paid that. Uh, so Patrick and I are both going, um, 
because we were looking for a, a, a diehard lethal weapon combo, but we're like, ah, this is close enough. It's basically the same movie twice. So, um, so we thought that'll be, that'll be a cool little thing. So it's like six, 6 PM on Christmas Eve. It'll be out at about like about 11, 1130. So I got tickets for that. So that should be fun. And, uh, always good to see Die Hard with Patrick. Nice. And I haven't yeah, seen, I movie. haven't seen Die Hard two on the big screen skin since like it came out. So that should be interesting. I just, uh, I bought for 10 bucks Christmas vacation. <laughs> Watch that shit. I love that. Fucking movie. Dude, that movie's great. That's actually one of the movies we talk about. I think it's not this week's, but next week's movie that we talk about for the holidays. Um, Oh, I told Adam and, and, uh, on this and, <laughs> I never saw Home Alone. Yeah, like, that's weird. Up until Saturday, because we're we're finishing up the tree. If you if you follow my my Instagram, you'll see like I uh, we finished up our tree. I put up a lot of my Doctor Who, Star Trek, Marvel, um, peanuts ornaments up. But I never saw Home Alone because when the time it came out, I was in high school when the original movie came out. And it was just like everybody was talking about. It. I was like, going, I don't want to see that kid, like, because I seen some of his other movies. And he was just like, you know, the little obnoxious kind of kid. So I never saw it. And up until Saturday, I never saw it. And I and I like to put Christmas stuff on when I'm when I'm, you know, decorating the tree. So I thought, yeah, it just started. I might as well. And my brother right. was kind of like the same thing. Like, eh, all right, put it on. And then by the end, I was like, yeah, that movie's cool. I like that movie. It just it you know I mean of course you have Joe Pesci doing his hardest not to sound like he's off, off the set of Goodfellas you know because <laughs> <laughs> we were we were cracking up because my brother's like is this edited I'm like no this is on cable he goes oh, and I go well this was a kids movie I go otherwise we would have heard him like a fucking little cocksucker I'm gonna fuck it you know and he take a <laughs> mallet and like bash his head in right on there right. <laughs> and um. But we were like, I was like, going, oh, wow, that was really cool. I actually really liked that movie. So I got it for eight bucks at Target <laughs> the other day to add it to my Christmas collection. I was like, I, I, I don't know. It just was one of those where I was like, oh, he actually played a kid, a responsible kid, like a, a total fantasy kid. You know, he went he went grocery shopping. He did the dishes. You know, he did all that stuff by himself. I'm like, man, that fucker looks better than I do. And I'm an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sitting in the house eating fucking uh, Cheetos and shit. <laughs> eating Cheetos, like man. I mean, I should get food, but like, Why? there's a marathon on right now. It's just stupid <laughs> shit. Oh, but see, I I'd go do it, but I I want to pause the movie, but my the remote controls on the couch, and I'm on the recliner. And, ah, like I would, <laughs> I have the I have the remote, but the Cheeto cheese is all over my hand. <laughs> right. but, I don't want to make a mess. And I don't want to let the dog lick the Cheeto cheese off because then I got to put my hand back in the Cheetos bag and that, you know, and I don't want to go to. That's just gross. They say a dog's mouth is cleaner than a human's, but still, you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) But that dude licks his balls and, you know. Yeah. I don't. I mean, so do I, but wait, what? (laughs) I mean, he licks mine too, but wait, what? (laughs) (laughs) Only when I get the peanut butter out. Oh, shit. (laughs) Oh, man. <laughs> All right. So our main story this week is going to be about our Christmas list recommendations. For those of you, we do this every year. Give you a couple items that we think uh, you guys might uh, you might dig. But um, before that, we'll go ahead and hit some headlines. So in entertainment news this week, how many fucking Harley Quinn spinoff movies do we need? All of them. <laughs> so we already know she's signed up for Suicide Squad 2. Then of course she had a she was supposed to be spearheading a Gotham si- City Sirens where she was supposed to produce and star as well as signing on to uh a uh possible Harley Quinn Joker movie. But now we're hearing that there's a third Harley Quinn movie in the works. I guess this is going to be, that's why there's going to be no more justice league, probably because they're all going to be Harley Quinn movies. But in a, um, in an interview with, uh, I think it was, yeah. Collider quote, I've been working on it for two years now. It's hard to talk about it because all this stuff is under lock and key, but no, I've, been working on a separate spin off Harley thing for a while now, not sirens. It's a totally separate one. 
yeah, there's going to be there's a lot going on right now, and I honestly don't think anyone knows what's going to be next to hap next thing to happen. But I think everyone's keen on um, to get Harley back on the screen, so everybody's working on different versions of what that could be. So, um, yeah. So apparently, there's going to probably be another, you know, Harley Quinn movie that's supposed to come out. I I, I really don't think we need three of them. They're going to run Harley Quinn ground. They're going to be the Activision of Harley <laughs> in regards right. to Harley Quinn, you know? People, people, people in a few years, people are going to go, remember when people liked Harley Quinn? I see her <laughs> one more fucking time, and I <laughs> swear to God. You know, everybody's going to be like, you know what? I'm going to go watch the animated series. <laughs> That's yeah. Harley Quinn. I'm going back to the source, man. Fuck this shit. <laughs> And there's that one Google. Yeah, I'm gonna read a share of the comic. No, motherfucker, the source was the animated series. Get your life right. <laughs> They're getting blades out and shit. Like, oh fuck. <laughs> These motherfuckers are on that real <laughs> shit. I don't want to come to Comic Con no more. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. It's straight out in like Comic Con. <laughs> Oh man, but I'm like, yeah, they're gonna. They're, I well, let's let's see if any of these even come to fruition. I mean, yeah, that's the thing is they could be writing scripts or treatments or whatever, and then nothing happens. And like, plus, be... what what's gonna happen with Warner Brothers? I mean, if they get sold to AT and T, I mean, they still gonna they're still gonna pursue it, or what's gonna happen? You know? Yeah, who knows? I wouldn't be surprised if Warner Brothers was like just write all the treatments, and then I want to see it. And then I'll pick one. You know, that's basically what they're doing. I think that's <laughs> I pick more. this one. Um, that's the animated series. Well, fuck it. We'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I pick this one. That's the animated series. I know what choice I fucking made. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> you can see him with a fucking Harley Quinn t-shirt, but it's the original one. <laughs> right. He's like, I know what I fucking said. <laughs> Who's writing the checks around here, motherfucker? <laughs> you knew? You brand new? <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen i'm trying to do this like the reading thing that they do and it always fucked it up <laughs> okay like you know how edge has that reading mode where it oh, takes all the yeah. pictures off um so netflix has picked up the sabrina the teenage witch horror series for two seasons after its previous development at the cw deadline reports the series will be inspired by the chilling adventures of sabrina comic book of oh it, that's the title the <laughs> chilling adventures of sabrina comic book and will be much darker than the 1996 sabrina tv show i hope starring, so <laughs> starring melissa joan hart um i had a crush on her when i did too out, I, I did too i was like oh, um yeah instead this new take will have a tone similar to the exorcist focusing on sabrina's struggle uh being half witch and half mortal yeah, I kind of heard about this series. I heard it was actually kind of dope. Um, Riverdale showrunner, oh, you already lost me. Roberto Aguirre Sacasa penned the script and is set to direct the untitled series, which I'm pretty sure will be titled Sabrina the Teenage Witch, or just Sabrina. Um, the two 10 episode seasons will reportedly be shot back to back, but a release date for the show is not yet known. Uh, Sacasa will also be executive producing along with Riverdale Riverdale collaborators Lee Tolan, Craiger, Greg Berlanti, Sarah Shrek, and Archie Comics CEO John Goldwater. The series was originally being developed at CW where other Archie Comics show, show Riverdale airs. It's currently unclear if this new Sabrina series will be set in the same universe as Riverdale. It won't be. Yeah, well. Now that Netflix has picked up the series instead of the CW. So here's the thing. <laughs> just hearing who's involved and how many times Riverdale was said, it's basically going to be Riverdale with witchcraft. Well, that's what it was originally. I remember when they first talked about this, they said that this Sabrina was going to be, they were going to do like what's called a backdoor pilot. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, they, cause they, you know, if you just do it nice and slow, you know, that everybody, everybody has a good time, but um, they were supposed to do it as a, as a backdoor pilot for, the CW and it was going to essentially spin off from Riverdale, but going to Netflix, I kind of wonder what happened. Maybe they wanted to go a little bit darker, a little darker, or, yeah, a little darker than, I mean, cause you think about, you know, supernatural and stuff like that. There's there, there it's dark, but they have a lot of 
comedy to it you know a lot well, of it's, it's definitely it's definitely going to be very occult yeah. you know and i think on netflix you can you can do a lot more with that than you can on the cw yeah um the cw pretty much everything has to have a happy you know so no I, that's not true it just has to have a lot of uh melodramatic uh romance stuff involved yeah and they're all have to be um, really pretty people that's okay. I don't mind that. I know what reality looks like. You know, I don't need to watch that on TV. Um, I see that in it, the mirror every day. Right. <laughs> I'm searching for the man. No. Um, the uh, all I all I'm saying is, if they make this show, if they don't have Melissa jo- Joan Hart guest appear just to say, "Well, this is all a little dark" or something like that, they fuck it up. Like it needs to happen. But I don't know. Maybe this can this can fill. A little void that Constantine left, because mm. I like occult shit. I, I I dig it. Like if it's done, if it's done right, right, and it's not hokey, like it's such a rich, um, like Christian occult and shit like that, and Wiccan stuff and all that. It's it's really rich in fucking shit that you can do, you know. So let's let's have her fight some demons. <laughs> yeah, suddenly it's gonna be something straight out. You're like, going, oh shit, she's bisexual. What, what the fuck? <laughs> it could be the new Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Mm. You never know. And I can't really talk too much shit about Riverdale because I've never seen it. It just looked dumb. And the only one I know who likes it is my 17-year-old daughter. <laughs> so I'm going to guess on that assumption that it's not the show for me. Right. I The only thing I watch on the CW is the DC shows. I don't watch anything else on the CW because I see everybody and I'm like going, Oh, I'm supposed to believe that 20 year old hot chick is supposed to be a uh, Apache helicopter pilot in the military. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> listen, I I actually defended the CW at work one time because I was like, listen, I don't like most stuff on the CW. It's not a comic book related thing, but they're not bad shows. They're just not for me. They're made for someone else. They're made for teenagers. They're made for people who still think like teenagers. People who like that melodramatic shit. People who like teenagers. What? <laughs> what? I mean, even the co- even the comic book shows are, are on CW are, are, can get melodramatic. It's yeah. just the source material so much better that you can overlook it. Right. You know, but some of them, the CW is a lot better than it used to be. Let me just say that. <laughs> it used to be fucking Somebody trash. say. Fuck, don't even stop. <laughs> that was a travesty. Travesty. <laughs> We're going to have the whole Justice League, but Superman isn't going to be Superman. Right. <laughs> oh man. Uh before we go down that road into our another to, into into well you can hear more about that on our Patreon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um let's move on into gaming news. This comes from Polygon. For a little dose of PlayStation 2 nostalgia, Sony and uh Truant Pixel are releasing a new legacy theme for PlayStation 4 that invokes fond memories of its best-selling console. The Legacy Dashboard theme will be released on December 6th for the PlayStation 4, the same day as the three Jack and Daxter PS2 classics hit the system. The theme costs $2.99, and it, it's clear that it's a great deal to, of work went into recreating the PlayStation 2 menu backgrounds authentically. Developer Truant Prixel said it spent the past two years developing prototypes mimicking the PS2 dashboard and fully recre- and fully recreated the console's memorable boot sequence. In a video posted on YouTube, the developer cautioned that the theme isn't a one-to-one recreation in one sense, noting that it can't use the PlayStation 2 logo due to licensing restrictions, so it created a mid-boot Easter egg, which changes randomly when- with every login. Truant Pixel continues, quote, from there, the seven stars make an appearance, coalescing, coalescing from random points to recreate the mathematical and dynamic formations to accompany the passage of time similarly recreated for the original PlayStation 2 BIOS in the form of the crystal clock. Color shifting is now controlled via user input. The subtle shifts are in, partic- in particle speed and behavior. Additionally, original audio has been taken from the PlayStation 2 hardware and recreated in the background, ambiance, and custom keynotes for this theme. Uh, Truant dashboard theme is for PlayStation 2 is designed to support 1080p, 4K, and OLED displays, Truant said. You can compare the developer's work to the original PlayStation 2 dashboard, and you'll be able to see that on 
Um, we have this link in the show notes for on the uh, Lazy Geeks. It's pretty cool. I was like, going, oh, that's kind of cool. I mean, it kind of reminds me of um, when Sony did still, I think, one of the best video game commercials I've ever seen where it was like it was in London because it was a London skyline. And you went through this whole like these. There was so much going on, like there was these kids and they were playing original PlayStation. Then they grew up PS2, college kids, PS3, adults, PS4. And in the background, the London skyline kept getting like more advanced. Oh, wow. at the same time. It was so good. Man. If, you, <laughs> if you guys haven't seen that commercial, you got to look it up. It was so good. Um, but yeah, I mean, play on that nostalgia. Yeah. You sell tickets. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. So moving on to a superior, I mean, a different. <laughs> console <laughs> no I'll just play it um this is a really vague thing but i thought it was interesting well, it comes from microsoft um, of course it's going to be vague <laughs> right microsoft has announced that it's broadening its approach in the gaming market ceo satai nadala um announced the company's ambitions in the gaming space during microsoft's annual meeting of shareholders uh this is via dual shockers quote we're mobilizing to pursue an expansive opportunity in the 100 plus billion gaming market said nadella this means broadening our approach to how we think about gaming and end about starting with games and how they're created and distri- distri- distributed and how they're played and viewed nadella went on to reference services game pass and mixer as a as a means to promote connectivity among its hardware and said Microsoft plans to grow and engage the over 53 million Xbox Live members more deeply and frequently. <laughs> Did her in a movie first, Nadella, <laughs> calm down. He also mentioned the Xbox One X is seeing incredible response from fans this holiday season. It really has, too. I was looking at the, the height. It is so big for this fucking console. Not not so much for the other one, but this one is pretty hyped up. Um, If you just picked up an... Uh, fuck you. That's that's extra shit that don't matter. So, um, broadening approach. I kind of think they're talking about more digital distribution, like a focus on that. And honestly, I think it's time. I think I think it really is time that they really start pushing that because people are a little bit more comfortable with it now. I mean, half of the games I own on the console are digital. Yeah, there's you know, it, and it's funny because I listen to. Um... I listened to this podcast, uh, gaming podcast, and uh, they they actually talk about some. Uh, what's the podcast? Real quick, I'm just looking this up real quick. Um, do 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 do. Oh, kind of funny, kind of funny game cast. Mm-hmm. And uh, most of those guys used to work for IGN and left and went and started their own their own deal, but they had a, a marketing director for Xbox on there, and he spoke about Xbox in a way that I haven't heard anybody from Xbox actually say it. And I was going to, that's the whole reason why I was going to save some of that for the uh, Christmas recommendations, because it, it, it kind of coincides with why I, I recommend uh, something, but yeah, it, it, I've heard that before. And um, when I, when I kind of heard all the stuff that they had done, it makes me like, oh, okay, I see where they're going to go. Right. You know, it kind of, I mean, to me, like, I was talking about this recently with a couple of friends, and one of them was against digital. He's like, I like to own a copy. I'm like, but you really don't anymore. The disc is just a key. Yeah. So now it's one extra fucking thing you have to do to get the game to start. Well, yeah, and, you know, and it, there were some people that still do that. Like, Patrick does it. Patrick likes to have it, even though the PlayStation 4 is still the same thing. You're like, it's just the key to get into yeah. the system. But there is some, I get it, though. I mean, there is something about physically owning it, because... You know, and we talked about this way back was like digital. It, it's like you own it, but you kind of don't. I think there's right. just there's just something tangible about physically owning it. I mean, I still fucking buy Blu-rays, even though I don't need to. I can just buy shit on Vudu or whatever. But in the end, it's like, well, whatever happens, what happens if Vudu goes under, you know, or, you know, <laughs> you know, Amazon or something like that. You know, it's like, yeah, we think about it now. Like, yeah, it couldn't be. But you know what? They said that about banks a couple of years ago. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. So, you know, anything's possible. But I, I, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, I, I do get it. But the same thing is like, you know, you buy digital, but yeah, your hard drive crashes. You don't lose the games. They still are in your queue and you can re-download them. But I kind of get it. 
Yeah, some people, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I respect the fact that some people really want something tangible on their shelf or whatever. I think certain um, games deserve that. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, I used to be that way. I used to be very strict. But now, I mean. You got kids. I don't know. I got kids. Like, all the, I buy a lot of movies from Voodoo. Voodoo has some sick deals, especially on kids' movies. And then if I buy Blu-rays, what are they going to do? Fucking scratch them? You know, there's just, it just doesn't matter to me yeah. anymore. You know, and then so many of the games that we do have are the ones that gave away for free, and they're not really emailing or fucking mailing me the disc. <laughs> right. You know, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and also, I think the the gamers that are a little more receptive to this this kind of distribution are are people who do some PC gaming because PC has been like this for a long time. Yeah. You know, like everyone buys their games through Steam. You know, and and you just don't even give a fuck. And I come from that background, a lot of heavy PC gaming. So when when um Xbox. And PlayStation started doing it. I was kind of like, okay, you know, I mean, it, this is just we're moving towards that. Um, I didn't like how uh, Microsoft was strong on me in the beginning, but they changed <laughs> their they changed their tune a little bit. You know, well, so that was that um, was the that was the Balmer legacy was you know twisting your arm till it comes off <laughs> to right. do that. And then there are some benefits to digital distribution. Like one of the things is indie game development has yeah. skyrocketed. Oh, yeah. You know, because these companies are small. They some of these some of these companies they got like eight people working on the game. Like they can't afford to ship it. Yeah. You know, to somewhere. So they they just throw it up on the store. And even that has a cost too. But um Well shit when even nowadays when people review games and stuff like that, they're just giving codes. Yeah. Yeah. They're not giving physical games anymore. They don't even give you demo discs in the magazines anymore. Yeah. I kinda miss that. I know I kinda do too when you open up your PlayStation. Like when I uh well like um, when Patrick and I were talking on one of the other shows, uh, we cracked up because when he got his PlayStation 2, we had um, the demo. Uh, you, you always used to get those demo game discs, and it had Dynasty Warriors, SSX. I think it had something else on there. And we yeah. played the shit out of those demos, you know? And it was just like, oh, I miss those miss those days where you used to get Yeah, the- now now the, the new demo is your bootleg. Yeah. And then if, you, <laughs> <laughs> if you like it, you go buy it. Right. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. There's going to be people that are going to be like, fuck this shit. But you know what? One thing I thought about, it probably won't happen, but I would really be interested to see Microsoft make a handheld device. <laughs> I really would. And I don't think it would happen, mm-hmm. of course, but it would be um, it would be interesting. They probably will make a stronger um, showing on uh, mobile devices. Yeah. Because they were doing that with the Windows phone, but then no one bought the Windows phone. <laughs> right. So they'll probably, just like their other apps and services, they'll, they'll probably just start, start doing, moving them to Android. They'll probably start doing what Nintendo's doing. Yeah. And Nintendo's making money, man. Like, so it is what it is. So moving on into comic news. Uh, spoiler warning, by the way. This is for CBR. Uh, Amadeus Cho will not only survive the current Planet Hulk adventure, he'll make his way home to earth in fairly short order the question is will he survive the events of world war hulk 2 the series next storyline that kicks off when incredible hulk 714 arrives in march 2018 marvel comics is teasing that the young hero will meet his ultimate destiny by the time world war 2 hulk 2 comic comes to its conclusion the storyline by writer greg pack and artist carlo Bar- uh, Bar- Bar- barberi and featuring covers by mike uh, Diodato Jr. will pit the newly returned and potentially more barbarous Hulk against his champion teammates, Alpha Flight, Black Panther, and more. Oh, he won't. He won't survive against Black Panther. No, um, absolutely not. <laughs> quote: to Alpha sur- Flight for real, dude. <laughs> right. Uh, t- uh, quote: To survive on the savage world of Sakar, Amadeus Cho was forced to unleash his darkest impulse marvel executive editor and svp tom brevort said the next chapter of cho's story quote returning to earth now the hulk is at the wheel and it's a more unpredictable more unconquerable hulk than any we've seen before the heroes of the marvel universe must intercede as the formerly awesome hulk begins to crave his own path across the world incredible hulk 714 incredible Hulk, uh, let me try that again. World War Hulk 2 Part 1, Jesus Christ, uh, arrives in March of 2018. Um, this hopefully will begin to lead to the end because there have been teasing that Bruce Banner will be returning, um, which is good because I never really liked this comic. 
Uh, yeah. The totally awesome Hulk. I, I just, it's a kid as the Hulk, and it just was kind of like, eh. And it was funny because I was reading this um, this uh, list of comics that had, um, it was like the top 10. It was one of those lists, you know, uh, list posts that um, had the uh, worst DC um, uh, characters that took over the mantles of somebody else, you know, and they were talking mm-hmm. about like, you know, when uh, Commissioner Gordon took over for Batman, when Batman most supposedly died and, you know, all these different ones. And I was, and aside from like that one, I was looking at some of the other ones and I was, they were like, yeah, back in the, back in the nineties when DC decided that they needed to revitalize all of these and had different people assuming these mantles. I was like, oh, so kind of what Marvel's doing now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause they did it. They started it with Iron Man, didn't they? They had the chick doing it. Well, yeah, they start. Yeah, in this in this round, they had yeah, with and then Thor. Um, there was a chick Thor. And, yeah, and there all was that Thor, stuff, yeah. and then um, you had uh, they made the original X Men younger because they had their past to come to the future, and yeah, and I mean, I get it, you know, shake the tree, see what falls out, you know what I mean? But it's it's uh, a lot of times it just it's it's kind of tacked on, yeah, you know, it just feels kind of dumb, and then they get over it. <laughs> they go back to the way it was and, the, and then it feels new and fresh and then and the fans are going we didn't ask for this <laughs> right you know? did anyone ask for this <laughs> was it you people point at each other um one thing that i didn't ask for but i actually really dig <laughs> and that goes for two reasons so steve was generous enough to choose my comic book story for me today <laughs> And he's lucky he don't get these hands, okay? No, I'm just kidding. Um, this is actually pretty cool because I didn't see this. Um, DC comic fans have likely grown used to the blue rebirth banner on this comic book on their comic book covers, but these days will soon come to an end. Today, the comic book publisher unveiled its new cover design, which replaces the banner in favor of a sleek corner box. Um, the corner box will provide information about the issue number, price, and rating. Each box will also feature the emblem of the starring hero or superhero group. So Superman comics will sport his iconic ass. Batman comics will be displayed in a telltale bat symbol. And Green Arrow will get, well, an arrow. Um, the new cover design will replace the Rebirth banner much in the same way it replaced the new two initiative banner. DC Rebirth was first introduced in 2016 as a way for DC Comics to enact a continuity. Ugh, I hate that. Continuity. continuity i always want to say continue and then i, <laughs> I get halfway through and go fuck <laughs> continuity rebirth that incorporated elements of the new 52 but reset the world of dc comics back to the point prior to the flashpoint arc um i over enunciated everything that time. <laughs> the end of dc rebirth will usher in a new era called dc universe an expansive new initiative that will feed off the events of rebirth and retain its continuity going forward i'm gonna tell you like this two reasons why i dig the new look one it's cleaner yeah um and two it looks like back in the day dude like these look like <laughs> 80s comics yeah we I just had the corner cool. box it has the price and the number but i really dig that that i it's so simple but i dig that little it's the symbol of who the comic is about and i, I just dig I, it and it, it was funny the reason why i i i because i wanted to do this and i wanted to do the hulk one then i thought well you know, usually a lot of times you kind of you you don't, you know, you you'll you'll miss things that I don't on on some of these comic sites. And I thought this was cool because I thought this harkened back to when we used to sit there and go like, okay, the new Fifty Two, it's five years now, it's not that new anymore. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like get over it. <laughs> and I like this though because another reason too that I think this is a, a big deal for me is that every time I see a comic that has something big on the top like New Fifty Two or whatever. It always feels like a temporary thing. Yeah. And now this feels permanent. Like we're we're gonna see this for a long time. Right. You know what I mean? And it, it's just clean. Like it just looks nice. Yeah, I mean Dig it, it. it's been like what, two years now? It's it's time to get over the rebirth. Now it's like they've moved their arc. We're gonna have the doomsday clock. And it to me it just seems like it's gonna come after doomsday clock. You know, yeah. as, as we get into that and and then we start seeing that. I think it looks cleaner. I thought I, I liked the look of it. So I was yeah. like, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for the when that when they start appearing that way. And the symbols are so simple, but they just look sexy. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, sexy. Skate, 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 skate. 
gonna go buy a, go drive uh go buy a comic book store and get a partial you know right <laughs> get that mellow mushroom bro. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a pizza place i was like ah oh, shit <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, and if any fans actually live near what's called a mellow mushroom, let them know you heard it from us. That's right. <laughs> Tell the world. <laughs> All right. Moving on into technology news. Uh, on the heels of Cumul uh, Cumulus filing for bankruptcy this week, a bigger player in the storm-tossed radio sector, iHeartMedia, could be also be headed towards Chapter 11. Uh, Deadline is reporting the struggling all year to refinance more than $15 billion in debt. iHeart, which is led by original MTV and then AOL uh, exec Bob Pittman, is uh, its proposal to restructure the debt and surrender more than 87% of the equity in the company was rejected. Creditors led by mutual fund firm Franklin Resources are pushing instead for greater control and one scenario would involve a Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing, according to a SEC filing Tuesday. The struggle, the struggles followed the decision by CBS to sell off its radio unit. Last month, its deal with Entercom, which became the number two radio operator as a result. The move sh shows the rip currents destabilizing all forms of traditional media, from print publishing to broadcasting, with so much music available digitally and often commercial free radio is seen as a less essential part of consumers daily diet though it's remains a superior tool for discovering artists compared with streaming iheart iheart's willingness to go to 87 percent is a departure from the its stance in october when it revealed a term sheet offering creditors more than 49 percent in the company's overall radio business and 70 percent of iheart's stake in outdoor ad firm Clear Channel Outdoor, iHeart controls almost 90% of Clear Channel. Um, of all the streaming things, I think iHeart Radio was probably the weakest of everything. Yeah. Because it's been around for a long time. Though. It's been around for a long time, but at, at this point, you got Spotify, Pandora, Amazon Music, um, Google Play, Google music. Play Music. You know every. Uh, That's the one I use. I've, I'm actually digging. My it. my toaster has its own uh, music <laughs> app. You know, and and you can listen to anything. And and even let's just even go a step further. If you have an iPod or you know an iPhone, you have your own music on there. Podcasts. You know, it's. Well, then even the streaming apps too. They have curated stations based on the music that you listen to. Right. Like Google Play is actually pretty dope. Um, where and I I've been using this a lot where it will, depending on what I'm doing, because it's linked in Google, like if I'm on the train, it will go commute. Like there's a commute mix and, it'll, <laughs> and you'll click on it. And there'll be like four choices. One's like upbeat hip hop and one's like feel good pop. They pretty much think we're all depressed on the train. <laughs> well, so, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but it, it's it's actually the funny thing is it's pretty spot fucking on. Yeah. Like it, it it's giving me music. It very rarely gives me music that I'm like, ugh. And then I just put fucking downvote, and I'll never hear that song again. Yeah, you know. So iHeartRadio's kind of harkens back to a more old school feel when streaming music was more like radio. Yeah, and you know the the thing is is like you know when you listen to things like uh, Spotify or even Pandora, you know you're listening to music, and then you after like half hour, forty five minutes, then you get like one one commercial, and then it's right. and then you don't hear it again. You know, when you're dealing with when you're dealing with actual radio, it's like a song, the DJ saying something, and then you go to like ten minutes of commercials, right? You know, and it's like it, it, you know, and most of the time, if your commute isn't that long, you're listening to mostly commercials anyway. You know, so it's like at that point, it's like I don't really see, you know, why radio would still be around. I mean, some people do use it because they don't have like you know, the connector that they can connect their shit to it. Or sometimes they just listen to radio because it's just background noise. I think honestly, like, and I don't listen to it, but AM radio is more important than FM. Oh yeah. Cause AM radio is like news and, um, a podcast more, basically. <laughs> right. It's more topical stuff. So right. if you, if you, you can always find a channel that's talking about something you give a fuck about on AM radio. Yeah. On FM radio, they're talking about whatever happened on, you know, whatever topical pop, show you know 
And then they're, oh, yeah, we have this person who's going to discuss everything about the Kardashians. It's like, nobody gives a fuck. Yeah. You know? And then it's my my wife listens to the hip hop station in the morning. And it's one of the few reasons why I like that. I, she doesn't try me to work anymore because <laughs> it's just it, every morning is the it's same fucking much. thing. We're going to catch someone cheating skit. Yeah. Or, you know, let's just make fun of everybody in the news. It's like, uh, <laughs> it's like I'm listening to fucking TMZ in the morning. Yeah. It's just annoying, but people like it. If you like it, then fine, listen to it. But you know, yeah, I'd rather just listen to bullshit that I want to listen. To. Exactly. Well, we're approaching on a quarter of the hour, and we're going to go ahead and hit that traffic spot. You know, with Adam over there on the traffic copter. What you got going on up there? <laughs> hey, motherfucker! You know everything's backed up like it always is. You know the same thing every fucking. You got to have the chopper sound in the background, right? <laughs> There's a bunch of accidents because people drive like shit. <laughs> you know, let me do the fucking traffic copter all day, dude. I'm like, hey, guess what? You know how it was shitty yesterday? Still shitty. <laughs> It's the same time of day, douchebag. <laughs> hey, you live in LA? It's still shitty. <laughs> you live in New the York? Funny it's thing, still shitty. <laughs> we were talking about that once. We were talking about, oh, I have to hear the traffic report every morning before I leave. I go, why? Just Google you Maps. Go to this, I was like, no, I said, you go to the same destination every day at the same time. You're going to have to go anyway. Right. And they're like, well, I need to know if I'm, if I'm going to make it on time. I'm like, you should be arriving <laughs> half an hour early every day. That way you have buffer time. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Is that a little too East Coast for you? <laughs> like, these motherfuckers are showing up on the dot if they're lucky. Right. Or late. Like, I, I love on the on the West Coast. It's the only place where you'll find this shit. At least they didn't have it when I left. Um, but it's like, oh, you have a 15-minute grace period. And I'm like, why? <laughs> and they're like, oh, just in case, you know, because if you're going to be late. And I go, but no <laughs> that doesn't make any sense so that just means everyone shows up two minutes late that's all that means <laughs> that's <laughs> so not whatever. every place not every place does that no it depends on where you work it's yeah. like we're i work at a um a big bank like i don't work at a like an actual bank but i work with the bank and um you can be you can be 15 minutes late but if you do it consistently you're gonna get talked to because the people get talked to almost at least every week. I see at least one person getting pulled in an office because they're late all the time. I'm like, why is it so fucking difficult for you to get to work? Well, I don't have like, to be. I mean, I can be 15 minutes late, so I got extra 15 minutes. Is how they and it's always, it. it's always the fucking same answer too. It's like, well, there was traffic, and then, I'm like, you should be leaving earlier. Yeah. Stop being so fucking lazy. And then no one can beat me because I take the bus and the train to work. Yeah. So like, well, I have to wake up half an hour before i leave i'm like really because i leave the house at six in the morning to make a nine o'clock shift so fuck you <laughs> even and i get there an hour early <laughs> overtime bitches <laughs> so it's whatever um this this bit of news man th this was fucking dope and i heard this on the real news um <laughs> on the unlike on the, the fake news but <laughs> right the new york time um nasa's voyager one uh, has been drifting farther and farther away from our planet for the past 40 years. Now the agency has ensured that it can maintain contact with the farthest spacecraft from Earth for at least two to three more years by waking up a set of backup thrusters it hasn't used since 1980. Voyager needs to rotate itself every so often so that its antenna points to our planet. It, or it orients itself by firing several 10 millisecond puffs with its thrusters. Problem is, the one it regularly uses hasn't been performing as well after four decades in space. Since nobody can physically check the condition <laughs> of a probe 13 billion million or 13 billion million, 13 billion miles away, the team first gathered experts to assess the situation. On November 28th, they finally test fired the backup thrusters, which worked perfectly and rotated the spacecraft just as well as the primary ones can. Todd, but well, I mean, they're the backup thrusters. Aren't they supposed to do that? Well, yeah, but there's the, you know the, oh, the, the, the lifetime the, guarantee usually doesn't go for right. forty years. <laughs> Todd Barber, one of the propulsion experts who looked at the issue closely, said that quote: "The Voyager team got more excited each time with each milestone in the thruster test. The mood was one of relief, joy, and incredible blue after witnesses the, these <laughs> well-rested thrusters." Pick up the baton as if no time had passed at all. 
Thanks to the successful test boards, you will switch to the backup thrusters in January and will be able to beam data back to Earth a bit longer. The team might conduct a similar test with Voyager 2's backup to ensure it can also send data back after it follows its older sibling to inter interstellar space in a few years' time. Yeah, because Voyager 1's the only thing we've ever built that's in interstellar space currently. Yeah. Um, so it's getting slightly odd readings <laughs> well, well it needs to it needs to because it needs to uh eventually reach a black hole and then becomes v'ger and then comes back and then that's how we get star trek the motion picture wasn't so. that voyager six hey you hey. you can trust voyager one hey, you, okay you know vo it's gonna happen <laughs> it's gonna happen right it's gonna happen <laughs> they just need to make three four and five and then six is gonna go out right no um <laughs> but this is this was really cool like this voyager one just is like the Energizer bun. Yeah, when I, I I remember seeing this story, I figured you were gonna you were gonna pull this one, uh, and I, I remember seeing that uh, um, on the news, and I was like, "Holy shit!" I go, "Man, we don't make shit like that anymore." I was thinking that too. <laughs> this is when Made in America meant something, because those rockets were made by um, something Rocketdyne Industries. Mm -hmm. Like a, everything's American on that fucking. Thing. It has to be because of the time. And then we I heard that beat. they were going to uh, they were going to press the albums. That were on the Voyager, uh, on the uh, 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 Voyager probe, oh, and release. Yeah. I was like, going, "Oh, that that'd be kind of cool." I'd buy that <laughs> <I> shit, <know. laughs> or at least download it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know it was like going, "Fuck, that thing is still fucking working." I remember that shit. I was like, "That's right, America." So dope. That's what needs to make America great where's again. Voyager, where's Voyager two? Um, I think it's at Risa right now. <laughs> Getting a little R and R. Yeah. yeah. Where is Voyager two? Um, <laughs> Voyager two is the only spacecraft to study all four of the solar system's giant. Uh, oh, I just want to know where it is. <laughs> the last known. They go the last known picture, and you see it, and there's a Borg drone on there. You're like, oh shit! Oh shit! <laughs> Everybody step their game up. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like. You can't just give me a fucking map. Oh, here we go. No, that doesn't. That doesn't <laughs> tell me shit. Whatever. I'm, right. I'm sure you can figure it out. All right. So, as I said earlier in the show, uh, every year we tend to do uh, Christmas recommendations. Always just some gift ideas, you know, based on either, you know. I guess you could say like a uh, geek factor or just something that's cool or something really that's recommended at a good price, things along that line. So tonight our main story is going to be our Christmas recommendations. <clears throat> so, so sexy. Yeah. So, um, so we actually pulled together a list of five items, not to say that that's the only five items, you know, but these were items that, that we individually picked ourselves and uh, thought that uh, they would be good recommendations for, you know, whatever, for various people that you probably may be thinking about getting even for yourself. So uh, because, you know, you got to gift yourself. That's right. You know, because... Because who's more important than you? Exactly. That's that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so, which is that kind of thinking is also one of the major problems in this country. <laughs> but still. <laughs> uh, all right. So, do you want to go with yours first? No, you go first <laughs> because one has a point. <laughs> uh, so, um, so first on my list. I have the TCL 55, the class 4K uh, HDR Roku Smart LED TV. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the reasons why I chose this one is right now this particular television, 55 inch, keep in mind, is 398 at Walmart. This is one of the, um, and you probably have seen TCL. If you've listened to any type of technology podcasts or you've read about deals on um, HDR, 4K televisions, the, there's a couple of reasons for it. This is one of the more in, most inexpensive and actually best-reviewed televisions you could get right now. Um, with this, uh, one of the other big problems that uh, 
most of these smart televisions have is the operating system that they run on. Uh, right now, one of the probably one of the worst things you could do is if you want to use something that has an integrated screen uh, with um, with apps, you're probably not using it. I have a Vizio TV that has some a few apps, but I'm mostly using my Xbox or on other televisions, uh, Apple TV. You may be using something else. The problem is usually the operating system. Operating systems is usually one and done within a year. Uh, very seldom do they get any type of updates. So you may want to steer towards apps that usually have updates, like a Roku. Um, Roku is always... I'm not a big fan of Roku, only, only on the superficial level. Their feed usually looks a bit messy for me. However... That, yeah, they use like a tile kind of. Yeah, look. it's very Windows 8. <laughs> <laughs> 8. Uh, 8.1. 8.1. Yeah, let's go. All right, 8.1. Uh, but I, but with even with that, you still get the most amount of apps. Usually on OSs that come with HD televisions, you get the main ones like uh, Netflix, Hulu, YouTube, maybe Amazon. And <laughs> that's kind of a give iffy but at least with roku you're going to get pretty much almost everything that's out there right now and roku specific stuff too if yeah that. They yeah have extra shit on there. right so if you're looking for a tv you know maybe i don't know maybe you're looking as you know you want to get you know boyfriend girlfriend or something something you know a 4k tv that they um that they may want that they've been looking at this is a really a really well uh recommended um television this particular model comes with three HDMI ports, which is very hard to come by. Yeah. Most of them, you're you're getting one, but sometimes you get two. I have three on my TV, and I still have to use a splitter on one of them because I put my PlayStation 3 and my Xbox 360 there. Yeah, but that's that's really but, a gamer issue. Like, people no, who aren't that's gaming, everyone's like issue. Thing. That's everyone's no. issue. <laughs> Stop it. I actually have a, I have a TCL TV. It's a um, 50-inch uh high definition um 10 8 and uh it, it's a roku tv as well and it's it's gorgeous it, it doesn't they all kind of look the same yeah like the the base and stuff and it um i've never had an issue with that tv and we use the app every day we use it never have an issue um and i've i've been really impressed i actually got it for free well not really for free but i bought some furniture from a furniture shop we threw it in you know, so um, I spent a considerable amount of money on other things. Um, and, and at the time, it was a $500 TV, and um, which should tell you something about these 4Ks coming down yeah. in price pretty quick. But yeah, it's it's great. It has all the apps you ever need, YouTube, Netflix, Voodoo, Hulu, Amazon, HBO, all of it. It's it's all there. The sports apps, everything. Roku, I like Roku. I like Roku because of the availability. Yeah. You know, you don't, you really don't have to worry with Roku because sometimes when you get like, um, like Apple TV. I mean, Apple TV is gorgeous, but they might not have certain things that might be a competitor or something but like now, that. But now they've changed that because they've actually added an app store. Like, yeah. uh, and so you, when, an, when a new service comes available on the Apple TV, you can just download the app. The older generations um, don't have that, so that makes it a little difficult. But the, the benefit of like an Apple TV, you know, as well as Roku, is that they're always updating their OS. So you're yep. you're not going to have to worry about it looking the same as it does. If they have a major update, it will update, um, and they're so they're always going to be working on it. And that's the problem when you get when you get stuff like Vizio or Samsung or Panasonic. They have their own smart TV, but it's not going to really improve any. Um, so and and that seems to be the consensus of a lot of people is if you're going to go with some a smart TV, look for something that is not made by the manufacturer. <laughs> Right, they're gonna kind of pigeonhole you, mm -hmm. and you get you get the uh, Roku remote, which is right. um the only the only negative I have about that is how small it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll be losing that shit. Like, like <laughs> fuck the remote go. Um, but no, great TV, good pick. Thank y'all. Good Thank pick y'all. Um, now these are in no order, by the way. We just you know shit we like. Yeah. They're not but in I'm any gonna, order, but they are in it. <laughs> right. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw um the Samsung Galaxy Eight uh, and Eight Plus on. As my first recommendation, or I some of you may may know it as an iPhone X, <laughs> right? Um, I have the uh, 8X. Steve has the 8. Um, I I don't want to speak for Steve, but I don't, <laughs> either of us have had any complaints. 
um, with the phones, uh, it's probably been the best phone I've ever had, which is usually how that should work because right. it's the newest phone. Um, but we, we've, phone. All, we've all had mistakes with our phones at some point. Right. Oh, please don't get me sad. <laughs> um, the, I think my favorite thing about this phone, I mean, obviously the screen is gorgeous. The camera works perfectly. Everything's great on it. The battery life is amazing. Yeah. Um, I can't speak for the 8. I don't know. I know it has a smaller battery, but also it's a smaller screen. But the uh, the eight plus is I mean I get through the whole day and I'm I'm fucking doing all kinds of shit on the damn thing unless I'm streaming Netflix all day then okay <laughs> you know but um it's it's definitely the reliability of the phone is is amazing to me and then a lot of the extra features and stuff I've been trying to use the edge screen a little bit more and stuff like that but um it's just good it's just a great phone yeah I um Adam and I pretty much got our phones around the same time and uh. You know, with the, with, I, I really like, I liked the seven that I had. I had a, um, this, uh, seven plus, or no, 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 I just had the seven. So that was the edge, seven edge. And then I got into the eight and I have to admit, I really like the eight. Um, yeah. the battery life, like Adam said, is great. Um, depending on how many, how much you run, like I, I'm one of those guys that has the Christmas light you know, border on my phone for Christmas. Um, with that and the always on, it does take a little bit of a drain on your phone. So if you have a charger sitting around or, you know, a wireless charger and congratulations to you, Apple users that just finally got that. Um, yeah. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to 2014. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, if you have one of those and, and for me, it's, it's great because I have, an app, a uh, wireless charger in my bedroom. I have one in my living room, which Adam uses when he comes over. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to use it. I mean, let me drop my phone here real quick. And then he makes a big production. He sets it on and just waits for the bing. <laughs> then, and then, then I, then with a satisfied look and a nod, I go walk to my walk, walk away. And then I'm picking it up every five seconds. Right. I want to use it. And, um, and also they, they do use the, uh, uh, USB C, which is so much better to use on these phones. Yeah. I, it's, you don't have to position it a certain way. Um, <laughs> you can do it too, when you're half awake, you know, right. and you just, this is like pink. You drunk, fuck <laughs> it. Like, you know what I mean? Like the charging alone too. I mean, if you're, if you're using, fa I use a fast charger, yeah. not at work, but I use a fast charger here. I'm an hour and, and I think I'm at like full. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's intense for how big the battery is in the eight plus. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty amazing. And I also want to throw in just as a side note. Um, I'm going to throw the note eight in there too, or the new note or whatever fucking, is it the Note 8? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it's really just an 8 plus with a stylus. And a little bit so, bigger. And a little bit bigger. But, Which my but, brother, I think, it, is going to end up getting the 8, the Note 8. Yeah, my wife, my wife as well. Um, but yeah, I, I want to throw that in there in this group too because it's pretty much the same phone. It just has slightly different features. But um, One thing I also wanted to throw in there, this is on the accessory portion. Unlike Apple, where you have to have dongles for everything, uh, Samsung actually gives you an adapter cap so if you do happen to just have one of those regular uh, USB mini connections, you can connect this port and it turns it into a USB C. Yeah, and it's they give you two adapters. They give you the um, micro USB to US USB C, and then they give you the standard USB oh, USB right. um, C, which is which I haven't really used in any real way yet. But I did plug a keyboard into the fucking thing, and I was typing and shit. <laughs> But you can use that. You can actually the OS supports it, where you can use that that um, that adapter, yeah. And you can plug in a USB drive, you know, like um. And I actually use that once. Actually, I'm 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 fucking lying because I keep it in my bag. A buddy of mine's like, oh, you know, I got a little something for you or something. I'm like, oh, cool. And that's none of your business what he got for me. But he had a little something for me on the <laughs> USB drive, and he's like, you gonna borrow it or what? And I said, no, oh, hold up. And I just click click click, bam, drop that shit on my phone. Yeah, and one thing that um, because I'm I'm going to the uh, L.A. Auto Show uh, today, I guess when this podcast is being released, I'm going on Monday, and um, I'm I'm taking one of those uh, quick charges, you know, those little charge blocks. I got one free one time, so it's like I can just connect that. Unlike these Apple people that just like to go find an open, you know, plug, I can actually just pop up right onto that little uh, the little charger piece there, and. Mm -hmm. um, and it uh, it has the it's good. I can connect the little micro USB to the USB C, 
and they just plug it right in there. So then everything's okay and everything's fine. So it, it, it really comes in handy if you're using that stuff or if somebody happens to hasn't up their game and you need to kind of charge it on theirs or you forgot yours or what have you like, Oh, I got the old one, Bop, pop that on there. You're good to go. Mm-hmm. So, um, really great device. I, um, I like it a lot. And, uh, and yeah, so it's, it's just like, although oh, I I'll the... also get a, <laughs> do get a case for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I do maybe, and this is personal preference, but without a case, it just feels too thin. Remember how many times it slipped out of my pocket? when i yeah. first got it because i didn't get a case like fuck we were at the theater dude and, <laughs> and and you just hear that clunk clunk and all of us were wide-eyed he had just got that phone and uh, it survived though it's yeah. it, i don't even think it had a scuff on it but um i actually yeah, i dropped it earlier this week i was i pulled it out of my pocket with my case and it slipped right out of my hand and it hit the ground but it hit on the edge of the case and i was looking i go man it's just a case and it is because it did like a pop pop but it hit the edges where the casing is and I was like, how is it that even with the case, iPhone users always crack the screen? Because iPhones are fragile. <laughs> it's like, good Lord, dude. Actually, speaking of screen, I need to get a screen protector, dude. I, I still don't have one. Neither. I mean, I baby the fuck out of my phone. Mm-hmm. And I have it in an otter box, but I don't have anything covering the screen. I like the screen protectors because they're not fingerprint magnets oh, like yeah. the screen is. You know, so they give a little bit of uh, texture to it. But anyway, that's my suggestion all right so my next suggestion and this has kind of been one of those things where i'm just kind of like well you know there's always that do you want should you get a playstation 4 pro or should you get an xbox one x um my personal and and keep in mind i've i've always been a playstation guy for a while for a long while um and you can you heard adam and, and i talk about this before um but Xbox One, I believe, is a better system. Um, it is the strongest console you can get out there right now. I mean, of course, you know, it has 8 gigs flash memory. It has 1 terabyte internal storage, 12 uh, gigabytes GDDR5 at 326 gigs a second. Uh, yeah. Full 4K, because that's one of the big things. Like one of the things, like people go, "Well, why don't I just get a, an Xbox One S?" It's not true 4K, and for that extra price, you can tell. <laughs> so it's one of those things where if you have an Xbox One and you're thinking about getting an X, just fuck it, get the X. Don't get an S. Um, there's just no point because eventually you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna want to get that upscalability. And uh, and another thing that I always recommend with this or the one thing that I would, I mentioned before with Adam is when I was listening to that podcast and they, the, the marketing guy for uh, Microsoft was talking about what Xbox is actually doing. It's, it seems like, like they have the gamer person in mind. You know, we have game pass, which is allowing people to, you know, download and and play past games and you know you're basically renting games now you know they've integrated that into it you also have every title you buy off the xbox you're getting a a free version on the pc or vice versa if you're on the pc you get a free you get you get a free copy for the console their controllers are are universally adaptable to an xbox or a, a pc you know they they really have kind of have so much up their game in regards to how the future of, of gaming, in my opinion, even the, even their social stuff. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, they have the mixer thing and right. that's kind of taken off a bit. And then, um, you just, they, their latest update for their, um, OS is just sexy. Yeah. Like it's just organized and just, I fucking hate the PlayStation ribbon. <laughs> I know it's a, I know it's a personal preference, but fuck yeah like i'm so sick of that disorganized jumble mess that is the playstation <laughs> right like i just can't stand it anymore and you know and then you know if you have a 4k television it's it's going it's it is one of those that you can totally see like the 4k difference also the fact that a lot of games are starting to get that that um, 4k upgrade and you download them they're going to be able to have that again we're also dealing with backwards compatibility that comes with the Xbox One X. 
you're dealing with everything. You can play anything PlayStation 1, Xbox 360. Now we're going to get the original Xbox games. I mean, it, it, you really can't beat that. People can sit there and say that the PlayStation, you know, is a is a great console. And it is. In its own right, it is a great console. However, they are lacking. I mean, they have a PlayStation now, which pretty much may, mainly means you can either play PlayStation 4 and maybe some PlayStation 3 titles. They always say backwards compatibility is such a big issue, but they're also releasing, you know, Ratchet and Clank, you know, uh, the original, you know, Max Payne. They're releasing those games, so it's like... It's definitely not an issue for ones they know will um, sell. Right, exactly. It's like, it's not an issue, you know, it's it's not an issue, but it is. And so, you know, I just, in my personal opinion, Xbox really has is really kind of taking the market to another level. It, it It's allowing you to just kind of, if you really love games, you really like watching movies, I mean, 4K player, all of that, it, it really is the best deal you could get. A lot of it's the little things too, mm-hmm. like the Xbox app that you can get on uh, Windows 10 as well on the phone. It's just real crisp. Everything you need is in there. Um, the syncing to the console to use it as a control real quick. I use that shit all the time. Because my Xbox never turns off. It's like the fucking media mecca of my fucking house. And um, it's connected to everything. Like it's, and they even still, they have that pass through bit. Yeah. Um, I personally don't have cable or satellite, but I mean, I, I do know people that use that. And they say it's great. It's great to have everything through one device. You don't really have to worry about it. You know, and it's, it's, um, it just Microsoft changed the game a little bit, I think. And, and Sony, listen, I'm not going to sit here and say the PlayStation sucks dick because it really doesn't it's it's an okay console and i know a lot of diehard playstation fans out there but when you when you stack them pound for pound like the xbox is a clear clear winner it's out front you know so it's you do what you can the only thing i think sony has right now for me if i'm looking at it is they do have a couple of exclusive titles um that are pretty dope but other than that i mean this, there would be there, i have a playstation 4 i haven't played it in like a year and a half like there's just no point yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's that's definitely a good pick. Sticking with games, motherfucker. <laughs> I'm gonna recommend the Switch. I'm gonna recommend the Switch for a couple of reasons. One, I think it's matured enough now. They have some solid title. Um, it's. I think that portable thing is is very interesting, and I see people. On the on the train, I see people out and about. They got switches with them, yeah. You know, and they're playing they're playing these hot fucking titles, man. Super Mario Odyssey, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, that Mario Kart Eight Deluxe with all the fucking characters. Like, there's so much to do on the Switch right now. Are they a little behind when it comes to um, the online aspect and, and a social community? Yeah, they are, and the apps and stuff. But that's coming. Um, the sales have been super strong. Nintendo hasn't seen success like this since when the Wii re- launched. Right. Um, and they, and also, too, big ups to Nintendo. I see them in stock. Yeah. In December? You know, yeah. I was like, come on. I noticed that uh, yesterday, yeah, uh, Saturday, I went to, when I went out, I went to Best Buy. And then I also went to um, Target. And Xbox One X's and, play, and Nintendo Switches. At Christmas time, right. they had them in stock. I was like, because this guy comes up and, you know, the shelf's empty right there. And you see, and the guy goes, this guy goes and he goes, do you have any switches? And he goes, oh, yeah, we have them in the back. We just don't put them out here. <laughs> and then the guy's, oh, okay. Those people jack them. Oh, fuck yeah, I did. <laughs> but, and I, and I just think, um, is it, is it underpowered compared to the other two? Yeah, it is. Is it fun to play? Fuck yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't need When to, you're playing Nintendo, Nintendo, you're not necessarily playing for power. Right. <laughs> well, in the 80s, they said you were. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but you also had a but, glove. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was at a, a used bookstore that sells electronics and stuff, and they had the fucking power glove under a case that was locked. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. Um, shit gets no, real here, they, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, the accessories are real. Like, you can get carrying cases, all that stuff. The Switch is dope. And I, I think uh, a buddy of mine has it, and um, he'll bring it to work sometimes, you know, especially if we're working weekends or something like that. And um, it's it's just it's it's so interesting that it's dope too. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like it, it's you just look at it, you're like, this is some different shit. You know what I mean? Like the, it's something I, exactly what they did with the Wii when the Wii came out. And I'm not saying the Wii U, 
the Wii. Right. The when the Wii. Wii came out, you were like, this is some different shit. Like, yeah. Nintendo's trying something different. And I think that Nintendo's always going to do that. They always want to do something weird. Um, they're the Japan of Japanese games. Truth be told. I was like, say, that doesn't even make something. sense. <laughs> it doesn't have to because right. it's Nintendo. Right. Um, Splatoon 2, other games on there. I mean, it's it's just Skyrim. Because you got to have Skyrim. If you don't have Skyrim, you're not a console <laughs> right. at that point. Um, no, but I'm definitely suggesting this one. The only negative I would say is the accessory prices are. Yeah. Like, you want to get controllers and stuff like that. It, 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 can, it can run. So it's a little bit of an investment, especially if you have a large family. But um, but it's even cooler too because if you have the dough and you have a large family, you can grab two of these, you know, and they can fucking jam out on the table or whatever, you know. I don't know. I think it's dope. All right, and um, yeah, I, I totally agree. I I want a switch, and yeah. um, it's it looks like just a lot of fun. And um, I was I was looking at them yesterday, and I was like, and I was looking at the games because they also have a shit ton of games out there for this. I mean, they've they've made such a move that kind of was like 180 from what they did with the Wii U. You know, they, they really had no idea what the hell they were doing with the Wii U and they managed to kind of curb tail that with the switch. And I think making it a good item to get for the holidays and also the I price like, point, 300 bucks. Right. I feel like the switch is what they wanted the Wii to be. Yeah. But they just weren't there yet. Yeah. In mm -hmm. um, technology. So um, my next one, and uh, you know we've we've talked about this in the past. Um, I actually am recommending if you're looking for somebody to get to get a tablet for somebody, I actually recommend an iPad. Um, not not the the ten point five, the iPad Pro or the the fourteen the, inch motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> The 83 inch iPad Pro right. Retina screen that will basically you need to rent. You need to rent an apartment to hold it. <laughs> right, exactly. You need to move out of your house. Is basically right. what you need for this. Um, the reason I'm I'm I have an iPad right now. It's not the the current one that came out this year. It's the the previous year's model. And to be honest, it's a great tablet. It it really is a great tablet. One of the reasons why I went to an iPad from I had I uh, I had a um a an Amazon Fire tablet early on. And it was mostly because at the time it was the accessibility of the apps. Also, I really just like the fact that the OS, you know, and it goes back to the, the, the Roku TV, you know, and the Xbox is they're on top of their OS. The OS gets updated each and every time. It's always, you know, with security, but now it's not as expensive as it used to be. The iPad right now, if you get one that's strictly Wi-Fi, now the they used to have a 16 gig and then a 32 and a 64. Now they've switched the the data to a 32 gig and 128 gig for an iPad. And to be honest, for a tablet, you really don't need it. You you can pretty much do a 32 gig with uh with cloud drive, or if you really like watching a lot of video, 128 gig. If you're feeling 128 gig, you you're 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 doing a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah. You need a laptop at that get, point. You might need to get a job. <laughs> like, right. like you, you're relaxing a little too much. Exactly. Um, but if you do an iPad with strictly Wi-Fi, for a 32 gig, it's 329. And for a 128 gig, it's 429. Which yeah, is they're actually not too expensive. They're anymore. not too expensive anymore. Remember when we were looking at 700, 800 bucks, you know, back in the day? Well, they they still do have one. That's oh no, like they, they, bucks. they do. Don't get yeah, don't get me wrong, they do. And they also have the hundred and for Wi-Fi with cellular, we're looking at thirty two gig is a four fifty nine, four hundred and fifty nine bucks, or hundred and twenty eight gig, five hundred and fifty nine bucks. Now that now when if you want to get the iPad Pro, yeah, it's a little bit of a bigger screen. Because you're dealing with a 9.7 Retina display on the regular iPad, and to be honest, that's the same size that I have. It's a it's it's great. I'm watching. Apple doesn't use standard sizing; they're a little wider, aren't they? Yeah, they're a little wider. Yeah. And the the Retina display also has really really great um, uh, coloring. It, it really it when you're watching movies, especially if you're reading comics, colors pop on that and and yeah I, the screen is gorgeous yeah when that. you're looking at those things oh my god when i was reading watchmen on it I, it was it was like <laughs> <laughs> um 
but the I mean with the iPad Pro you're getting 10.5 you're not even getting a full <laughs> you're not even getting a full inch of uh, uh, of extra real estate there the pic, um, the resolution though I mean for an iPad uh, for the regular iPad you're looking at 2048 by 1536 resolution on the 10 on the 10.5 you're getting uh, 2224 by 1668. Uh, but you're getting the same PPI at six, um, 264. So you're not getting any, any, you're just, you're getting a bigger screen, but you're not getting any real color density changes. Um, right. but you're also, I mean, you get more options than that. You get a 64 gig, a 256 gig and a 512 gig. And for Wi-Fi, the 512 runs you about 999 for with cellular, it runs you about $1,129. But to be honest, if you if you're using an iPad for pretty much just, you know, cruising the internet, using your uh, checking out your emails, using some apps, it doesn't have every app, but you know, no tablet ever really does. Um, and if you're just looking for something that's lightweight, they barely weigh a pound. The covers are very sleek; they never make it look bulky. Um, the interface is always is always easy to use. Um, you can you can. If you really need to, you can hook it up to your computer with your iTunes account or just do everything wirelessly. It, it really, it's really one of those that you're going to get and you're going to be able to um, utilize. And then like I use with mine, I have um, OneDrive on there. So anything that I have, I can access through there. If I need to download it onto there, I can download it. It's no big deal. Um, and when I, when I renew mine, I'm going to probably end up going with 128 gig but also you don't have to pay that full price right up front they're like smart devices now you can go to your wireless provider get an ipad through there and do the monthly payments for me it's 25 bucks a month for two years and then after the two years you can upgrade so you know that that's also an option for you there and uh, to be honest the ipad i think is probably the, the the best bet if you're just using it as a you know just as a uh, a recreational tool yeah, the iPad is nice. It's the only Apple device I've ever considered getting. <laughs> yeah, when he asked me, I was like, what? <laughs> and that says a lot right. for me. Um, and also, too, I've seen that they're going to be making some updates uh, to the Apple OS on the tablets uh, that really enhance uh, multitasking. I was seeing a demonstration of that, and I was like, oh, okay, that's that's kind of interesting because that, that's always somewhere I think Apple OS is, has lacked yeah. in the tablet is multitasking. In the multitasking, yeah. In the in the la latest, not the new one that's coming up, but the one before that, they you can double tap the home button and you get the, the layout, which actually makes it easier to kind of um, click and move through to, right. to access other ones. To access other yeah, apps. So definitely. Uh, I I would I would suggest that too. It's pretty dope. Now, I picked a different tablet. I didn't pick a different tablet because I think the iPad sucked. <laughs> I picked a different tablet because I was impressed with the upgrades that they've made and the price. Now I'm going to say the all the Fire HD 10, the newest one, Amazon Fire HD 10. For 150 bucks is definitely worth the cost if you just want to buy something outright, um, and it's got it's got some good features on it too. So first and first and foremost, full 1080p, so you can actually see things on the fucking tablet. Like you can read on it, stuff like that. We're talking 1920 by 1200, uh, 224 pixels per inch. Um, you can get it in 32 or 64 gigs, and of course, expandable um, up to 256 gigs with the uh, micro SD card. And you can get it um, with or without commercials. With or without commercials, yes. <laughs> I think it's like 20 bucks. Yeah, it's 20. And the commercials, you know, honestly, dude, like people cry about that. I have, um, I have a paper white, and the paper white does. I have the one with ads, and the ads work the same on all of them. It's only on the lock screen. That's the only time you see them, yeah. you know. So it's it's like whatever, get over it. Um, up to ten hours of um, of usage time. That's watching videos. That's surfing the web. And I've seen some video reviews of people that I trust, um, and it they really do get that. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the battery life is pretty good. Now, one of the cool things too is a lot of people are getting into the smart home stuff. Um, they're using Amazon pick your ecosystem but one of the most common ones is amazon 
And uh, this this tablet's the first one that has uh, Alexa hands free. The other tablets have Alexa, but you have to press the button. So while this sounds like a first world problem, <laughs> um, it's still pretty cool. Like uh, one of the biggest demonstrations they like to push is if you're cooking, right? Um, right? You can have the tablet up, you can change the track, um, you can start a video, whatever. Also, you could if it's you have one of those uh, Nest um, thermostats, you could be like uh, Alexa, set it to sixty seven degrees. <laughs> now, if somebody's like if somebody's listening to this not on headphones. Uh, sorry for resetting your Alexa. <laughs> <laughs> Your Nest Alexa, uh, buy all the things. <laughs> <laughs> buy Alexa, buy everything on my shopping list. <laughs> I don't know why Amazon can't figure that out. I have no like, idea. Cortana only answers to me, and I have like a studio mic. Like it can hear everything, <laughs> and people are in here trying to talk to it, and it doesn't respond. And then I just say something like at a whisper, and it comes up. <laughs> like I don't know why they can't figure it out. But anyway, um, one hundred and fifty bucks. It's is a damn good deal. I mean, it's got a uh, Wi-Fi. It oh, goes all the way up to AC with the Wi-Fi. Um, 17.7 ounces. Yes, you are in the Amazon ecosystem. However, there are ways to, um, and there will be an official way very soon, but there's ways to install the um, the uh, Google Play Store on there and download apps, apps on that. Um, it's definitely, a for the price, it's a great, great tablet. So the reason why I put this up here one, there's people that are a little broke and they can't afford uh, an iPad. And of course, they can get one on payments. That, that's fine. But the big thing for this is for um, for kids, for teenagers. You want to get them something for under the Christmas tree or even a, a little younger, something to watch their shows so you can actually watch something that doesn't have a fucking animal in it or something. <laughs> um, this is a great this is a great choice. Amazon definitely has um, cases on Amazon. <laughs> um that uh, are, are kid friendly. I, I've had a few of their cases before and they work spectacularly. Like my, my kid has fucking thrown the damn thing across the room and it doesn't, it doesn't phase it. Um, so definitely this would be a good choice. Like, yeah, if you're an adult, you want like the best tablet you can get, you know, of course, go get the fucking iPad, you know, unless you absolutely hate Apple, but I mean, <laughs> go, go ahead and get the, get the iPad, best screen, all that. You can look for something for someone a little younger or even if you got to get a gift for somebody that you don't a hundred percent like, you can get them this, <laughs> you know, and it's still going to be dope as shit. Comes in multiple colors, and that's definitely good for if you have multiple fucking kids, so they're not fighting over. And the thing with the um, and the thing with Amazon is Amazon always has the you know they always assume it's the the family the it's kind of the family, um, right? The family resource. I mean, that's why they even have you can do five monthly payments at thirty bucks. You know, yes. if you can't do it right away because you know they have that. And you know, to be honest with you know, with Amazon and Apple, you know, you have two different ecosystems, but also kind of two very different people that go in. Like I'm, I'm single, you know, and I want something that, and I've had, don't get me wrong. I've had the, um, the, uh, fire and I liked it. I liked it a lot until I realized that I wanted something a little more out of their ecosystem. And at the time I did it, they didn't, you didn't have a whole lot. Like you had some that worked, but something that some that didn't work great. Um, and, but then I said, well, why don't I just stop screwing around and then just go for the iPad? However, if you have, if you have kids or you have a family, multi, multiple people use the device, you may not want to spend, you know, that much for an iPad. Um, and the, the, the fire 150 bucks, let's be honest, if 150 bucks broke, you're not, cry, not quite crying about it. Three, right. 300 bucks broke. Somebody's dying. And, you know, it, <laughs> <laughs> But and they had they also have a they have a good warranty. Um, they it comes with a one year limited warranty like everything else. But you Amazon has a, a three year that you can tack on there that does cover accidental. Yeah. Um, and I have used it. I I I had a paper. I, this is my second paper white. Um, because I accidentally stepped on the fucking thing because it fell off my bed and then I get up in the morning and I stepped on it. And he's not the most I, greatest uh, gracious of walkers. No, and I um I got a a fresh one, no issue. You know, so it's um, it's it's interesting. It's an interesting choice, I think, for people who want something on the cheap or they want something. They want something on the cheap is something you can actually use because, especially with tablets, you can get a hundred and fifty dollar tablet and it sucks. Yeah. Like you, you're never gonna be able to. Use it. I was looking at video reviews. This uh, this um, the Fire Ten, lightning quick while he's moving through the moving through shit. Um, there was no issues, videos playing just fine, everything like that. 
Um, and then if you're already in the Amazon ecosystem too, all your shit's linked up. You know, you got no issues with that. Um, so that's my suggestion for tablets. All right. And uh, my number four is actually a game. And Adam and I have talked about this game for a while. And the reason why I bring it up is because it's a great fucking game. Um, yeah. uh, Ellie Noir. Um, also, I'm bringing it up because of the fact that it's been about, what, seven years since it, the original release. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great price, 40 bucks, digital or um, or physical. Uh, it's just, it's a completely 4K rendered um, remake of the, and not even really, re, It's I, I don't want to call it a port because it's definitely not a port. Um, but it's just, it's one of those, gr one of those great, Rockstar games, um, and let's be honest, Cole Phelps gets a little upset easily. Um, if if you don't know what I'm talking about, YouTube Cole Phelps, um, uh, irrational. I think is the is the word, and you, you, <laughs> you get some of his uh, you get you get some of his uh, <laughs> he gets a little crazy, a little quick. Let's just say it escalates really quickly. He has a temper. <laughs> he does. He does. But set during the 1940s, I mean, the game right now is out on the Switch. And the Switch is 10 bucks more because of the fact that they actually had to redo that game for the Switch. Um, PlayStation. Yeah, I think they had to go from the ground up. Yeah, on because, it. they, because it's cartridge based. And, and it, yeah, and it's never been on that console. Either. Exactly. It's on a Nintendo console. Exactly. And then you have it for obviously for the PS4, Xbox One, and then of course the 360, uh, PS3, and the PC. Um, yeah it's such a great game it's it's one of those that in my opinion it, to me it seems like it was it was very much an mmo in a uh in in a uh, uh console environment you know because you you are kind of having to work these cases and they're not easy they take a while this is one of the, yeah. if you like to get into a game that just kind of it's like oh i don't it, you're not kind of beating the level you're kind of you're you're kind of doing this for a while <laughs> That was one of the things. You feel like a cop. Like you'll play L.A. Noir for a while, and then you go downstairs or something, and and your girlfriend, wife, mother, whatever age you are, is like, "Are you okay?" It's like, "Oh, this is just this case," you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you bought a badge and shit, exactly. just so you could put it down. <laughs> exactly. You start you start realizing you're interrogating your loved one, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Where were you last night? <laughs> I'm not going to take these lines anymore. You can tell us the truth or you can do this the hard way. You know, it's that's right. <laughs> you start buying a suit and a, and a, and a felt hat, you know, right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> all period based too. Exactly. It's all 1940 shit. <laughs> no, it's, it's so cool. And it, they use the grand theft auto engine, of course, but um, you are a good guy. Yeah. You can't just go popping off. Um, I mean, you can, it, but you're going to have repercussions. <laughs> one thing, one thing that I really enjoyed in that game, is that so it's the 1940s you're driving 1940s vehicles mm -hmm. and they feel like <laughs> 1940s like they're heavy as fuck there's like no sharp really turns feel, there's no sharp right. turns i remember you, taking out so many light adjust. poles <laughs> you, you really have to adjust <laughs> but um that game is fucking spectacular and if you've never played it you're you really need to get it yeah i'm gonna this i'm actually gonna be perfect. picking that game up for uh but I, i'm just oh, trying yeah. to decide for which console i'm probably gonna go with the xbox um but uh yeah i'm oh my decision's already made <laughs> i'm gonna get it on the xbox um but yeah that i i love that fucking game you know who actually really liked that game um i had it on the 360 mm -hmm. before i i got rid of my 360 mm -hmm. and um my daughter who was 10 at the time samantha really liked it no um oh hannah oh really one of the twins yeah, she really liked. She also likes Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's gonna um, have issues later on in life. I'm just letting. Hey, you know what? <laughs> she was running a prostitution ring. No, I'm just kidding. Um, hey, well, but... she's an entrepreneur then. <laughs> there you go. As long as you're making money, you're doing exactly. That's exactly. all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, but it, but it's just it's just a great. Game. It 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 really is like. It really fucking is. <laughs> that's what I was like, <laughs> and for the price point, forty bucks. Come on. That's yeah. that's a stock. Oh yeah, you can, the, you can it's do a, forty, huh? Yeah, it's forty. Yeah, yeah, thirty nine ninety nine. You fucking, you just do it as a stocking stuffer. Stop buying fucking lattes for a week and you right. can afford it. <laughs> skip um, over, skip over Call of Duty and just go for this one. That's a definite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So I threw on the uh, the Nintendo um, 3DS and 2DS because they're essentially the same fucking thing. <laughs> um. 
and the reason I put this was actually a personal reason. One, it's a, I mean, it is the mobile gaming platform. I mean, there's other ones, but this is the one everyone plays. Right. So, I mean, if you want mobile gaming, you're, you're done and done. The only difference between the 2DS and the 3DS now, because the 2DS, the original one, which I have, it was a, uh, a candy bar form factor is what they call. So you couldn't fold it, um, which is fine for me. Um, I would like the screens to be bigger, but whatever. But the newest one is... <laughs> it wouldn't uh, be a handheld. <laughs> right. The The newest one is um, clamshell. So it flips open much like the 3DS. Mm-hmm. The only difference, other than the $50 price difference, is the 3D. So if you have no interest in 3D, which is probably most adults, you can get 2DS, you'll be just fine with it. But um, the, the the library of games alone is is so extensive on this platform you, you if you can't find a game you enjoy playing you ain't looking hard enough <laughs> it is just crazy how many games and, and especially rpg fans tons are available they got the old school games on there you can grab the the they have an online store even on that fucking little thing that you can download uh classic games and stuff like that for a price of course you of know? course um but what the reason why i said this was a personal reason uh, is i don't have a lot of time for gaming these days I, I work, I commute to work through the bus and stuff like that. So that takes a little bit of extra time when I get home, kind of tired, you know, stuff like that. So I really only get to play games on the weekend. And my 2DS has been the saving grace. Like I, I, I have an hour and a half of commute. A half an hour of that is I can't do anything because I'm walking or something like that. But um, there's an hour of me just sitting there waiting to get to my destination. I've pulled that 2DS out at least four times a week play a little mario i got zelda ocarina time on there you know i'm jamming on that shit you know just all types of shit and and it, it really it's cool if you if if you use gaming as a like many gamers it's something to relax something to kick back you know and just do something fun to enjoy your life for a moment um <laughs> it the who enjoys their this, life for a moment <laughs> right for just a moment for just a moment um a brief moment if you're enjoying it if you're enjoying it for too long you're not doing something right. <laughs> um, but it's great. I mean, I pull it out. Battery life on it is spectacular. Um, it's it really it's not just a kid's device. There's so much old school stuff on it. I have um, Zelda Link's Awakening, oh, right. which was a, a GameCube or a GameCube, sorry, Game Boy Color game. And it's one of my favorite Zelda games. I got that joint on. I'm still working through it because I forgot how to be that fucking boss that I'm at, but whatever. <laughs> Um, it's, it is the, it is the device you want. If, if you, if you're a lover of Nintendo, both classic and new, um, they're constantly coming out with games. Yes. Are there tons of games that you will not want to play? Yes, there are. <laughs> I have games for my kids cause I have, um, I have my two DS and then we have, uh, a DS and another one around here somewhere. And the kids play that one and there's like fucking Barbie pony parade and stupid shit like that you know <laughs> right. or or nintendo dogs oh that came god out. i remember that you know stuff like that so it, it's good for everybody really i mean definitely pick it up for how much how much was it 200, 200 yeah it's two 200 for the 3ds um the 2ds is 150 all right so one of uh the things that I'm going to recommend, my last thing to recommend, and I had to do something comic related because I just didn't think it was it would be nice to not do anything comic related. Right. So if you have somebody who is a lover of comics and who definitely, if you can say the words Jack Kirby and his eyes light up or hers, whoever's eyes light up, you know, you struck gold there. Yeah. Throw a girl, throw a girl in there too, before everybody sends us angry emails. <laughs> so, uh, Jack Kirby's Fourth World Omnibus. Um, I'm going to read the quick description of this. These are the legendary tales written and illustrated by Jack King Kirby that introduced the warring worlds of Apocalypse and New Genesis, their rulers, Darkseed and Highfather, and countless heroes and villains, including Orion, Lightre, Caliba, Calibac, Granny Goodness, and more. Witness the return of Newsboy Legion and the struggle of the new gods and the forever people to stop Darkseed's quest for deadly anti-life equation. This omnibus edition includes Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, numbers 133 through 139 and 141 through 148, 
New Gods, number one through 11, Forever People, one through 11, DC graphic novel number four, The Hungry, The Hunger Dogs, and a story from New Gods, number six in 1984. All of this, it goes on sale on the 6th, so essentially later on this week, and you can get it through, actually go through uh, dccomics.com and you can see it there, and it's 450 bucks. Um, it's, it's one of those, it's classic Apocalypse, Dark Seed. You know, this is this is something that if he's a comp, if they're a, if he I keep saying he because I'm thinking of myself, if <laughs> if they are a comic book fan and like I said, throw out that throw out that bomb. If you ever you know who Jack Kirby is and then they their face lights up and they're like, oh, my God, you know, uh, they you know that then you then, you know, you're you you're you're in the right area. So that that is my recommendation for for comedy. It's Jack Kirby wrote and, and illustrated it. And I mean. It's, that's done you and done right wrong. there. It's done and done but right you there. You can't go wrong. <laughs> um, mine is also comic related, but we're moving into um, animated films. And I think, I, I I don't know what Steve's idea is, but I think the out of all the comic book companies, DC makes the greatest animated. Like they're just so well done. Absolutely. Not not all of them are for children. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> um, but they're, they're definitely... Um, they're definitely set themselves apart from, from some of the other ones. I'm not saying Marvel doesn't have good animated, but DC is just better. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm just talking shit geez, now. Talking shit. Geez. Um, so my suggestion is a DC universe 10th anniversary collection. We're talking a collection of 30 movies in this box set. Um, and they're all the shit pretty much. Um, I'm going to run through the list real quick, real quick. Superman Doomsday, Justice League, The New Frontier, Batman Gotham Knight, Wonder Woman Commemorative Edition, Green Lantern First Flight, Superman Batman Public Enemies, Justice League Crisis of Two Earths, Batman Under the Red Hood, Superman Batman Apocalypse, All-Star Superman, Green Lantern Emerald Knights, Batman Year One, Justice League Doom, Superman vs. The Elite, The Dark Knight Returns Part 1 and 2, Superman Unbound, Justice League The Flashpoint Paradox, Justice League War, Son of Batman, Batman Assault on Arkham, Justice League Throne of Atlantis, Batman vs. Robin, Justice League God Monsters, Batman Bad Blood, Justice League vs. Tit- Teen Titans, Batman The Killing Joke, Justice League Dark, Tit- Teen Titans, The Judas Contract, and Batman and Harley Quinn. Jesus. <laughs> um... If you if if you're a DC fan for one, this is a done and done situation. There there really isn't much questioning after that. And also, too, we're talking over 20 hours of special features, including over two hours of all new content, exclusive collectible coins, and exclusive 40 page adult coloring book featuring key art from all DC Universe animated movies. Um, this this is a DC fan's fucking wet dream. If someone got this for me, I would blow them. Like I, I, I just—it's ridiculous how fucking. Well, then I'm gonna have a good Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and it's on sale too. Um, its list price is three hundred on Amazon, but right now you can grab it for almost half off, one hundred and seventy nine dollars and sixty eight cents. Um, it's forty percent off, so you're saving one hundred twenty bucks. If if you got a DC fan in in, in your house or in your family or a homie or whatever, and you wanna you wanna blow their fucking mind, this is definitely something to get, and they will love you, and they will fucking listen if anyone wants to buy this for me that you know the lazy geeks.com <laughs> <laughs> well it's funny because no. if you guys if you um for those longtime listeners you guys will know that we did mention this um se- we did a couple months ago uh look it up we know you won't but um <laughs> but yeah it's it's definitely a really really uh cool set um i yeah, it, it's one of those where you're just like, oh shit. Like I, I even want this. Like it's <laughs> This set is so large. As big of a DC fan as I am, there's movies in here I haven't seen. Oh yeah. Not many. Not many. But there's some in here that I haven't seen Superman Unbound. I haven't seen um Flashpoint Paradox. No, I was playing. You know I see Flashpoint <laughs> yeah. Paradox. I haven't seen some of the Wonder Woman joints. Um New Frontier. I haven't seen that one. Uh I saw New I Frontier. Seen... I like that one. Did you? Mm-hmm. I haven't seen. It was on um, Netflix for a while. It was another Thrones of Atlantis. I haven't seen that one. Oh no, I, I've missed that one. But there was there's some of the I mean, Assault on Arkham, dope as fuck. <laughs> um, Killing Joke was cool after the first twenty minutes. <laughs> right. um, oh, I haven't seen Teen Titans either because I'm not too. Batman and Harley now. Quinn. Um, I have to. Say, that was goofy. It was goofy. It was dude. goofy. I, I wasn't really. I mean, I like Melissa Rauch. 
you know, uh, she played Bernadette on um, on uh, Big Bang Theory. I like her, but I don't know. That voice just didn't didn't fit for Harley. It did, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed. The I guess flip I'm a Tara cause... Strong fan. <laughs> yeah, me too. I don't know why they didn't get her to do it. I don't know. Um, I I enjoyed the movie Batman and Harley Quinn only because it didn't take itself seriously. Yeah, because it was silly. Yeah, like there was a scene in it where. Uh, a bunch of bad guys want to fight Batman and he drinks a glass of milk first, all fucking hardcore. Like just real <laughs> silly shit, you know? And if it, if it tried to be too serious, I would have, I would have fucking hung it up, <laughs> but it was, it was pretty dope. Um, but there's some fucking doomsday Superman dooms. Hey, yeah. brother, if you haven't seen these flicks, step your fucking game. up. <laughs> all right. So hopefully that helped, uh, that helped out your, uh, your holiday shopping for this, this year. Um, we knew this episode was going to run long because of that, because we were going to take times. Adam wanted to do 10 and I'm, <laughs> I did cause I'm an idiot. And I was like, I think five is going to be good. <laughs> and he's like, oh yeah, if we did 10, this thing's going to be like eight hours long. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> With director's commentary. Right. <laughs> uh, but, um, but yeah, so, uh, hopefully, uh, we helped out you guys with some, some ideas or at least put you on the right path. Um, so with that, I guess we can jump right into our, oh, uh, what the actual fuck? So mine is seriously what the actual fuck. Um, this comes from Ars Technica, and I'm just going to jump right into the article. An explosive epidemic of HIV AIDS has gripped Russia in recent years, partly with the strength of the anti-Western conspiracy theories online that promote the idea that the virus is simply a myth. Online groups, forums, and chat rooms have repeatedly, repeatedly spouted up to spew denialism of HIV and AIDS recently, often with thousands of members, according to a new report by the AFP. One group dubbed the virus the greatest myth of the 20th century while calling HIV drugs poison and doctors killers, working to enrich pharmaceutical companies. They coached believers on only to deny treatment. Others claim the myth of AIDS is intended to establish total control over world domination. Meanwhile, Russia has seen steep and consistent increases in the rates of new HIV cases in the past decade, even as the rest of the world has seen declines. Since 2006, the rate of new cases in Russia has increased by at least 149% and has been steadily increasing by 10 to 15% each year. There are now only a there are more than 900,000 Russians living with HIV with 10 new cases reported each hour about 80 people die from AIDS related issues each day according to the AFP less than half of Russians with HIV are currently being treated for the infection it's unclear what percentage of that is driven by dangerous messages on the internet and elsewhere, a string of recent child deaths has enraged health experts and doctors there. Quote, it's unacceptable in our day and age that children are dying while a range of treatment is available. Alexei Yakolev, a leading doctor of uh, Botkin Hospital in St. Petersburg, told AFP in August, a 10-year-old girl died in the hospital after her religious family repeatedly refused to treat her. And the article does go on to on to specific cases of children dying of it because families have um, ev- have uh, these um, have uh, either considered it to be against the religious beliefs or that the fact that uh, you know it's a myth they don't believe in it um, and HIV in most cases in Russia is still considered a disease of druggies and American gays even though despite the fact that half the new cases are from heterosexual conduct and Russia's underfolded health system, drug shortages, and strict family family values-based health campaigns aren't helping. You know, I'll use an old quote, and I can't remember exactly what movie it's from. Steve probably will. But it, it originally, they were talking about the devil. Um, but I'll, I'll say it like this. Uh, you might not believe in HIV, but HIV believes in you. <laughs> Like it, it's so w- voluntary ignorance is really sad. Yeah. Like, and, and, um, but this, what this tells me is, is that if you ever are abroad in Russia, um, don't fuck anyone. Right. Well, it's funny because the last paragraph on this article says that, uh, the official campaigns of the Russian government promote protection 
through being intimate only with people you trust rather than condoms. Yet 30% of infected Russian women get the virus from their sole partners, she said. You can see how they're fucking around. Yeah. I'm not saying all Russians fuck around on their girls. I'm you but, know, just saying. But most Russians fuck around on their girls. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, yeah, I saw that and I was like, what the fuck? Seriously? Yeah. Are we like in 2017? Right. It's a myth. <laughs> yeah. Come on, guys. Yeah, it's a Let's... it's a West and only Western gays get it. You know. Right, 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 right. We're special, <laughs> Westerners. <laughs> Whatever. Um. So this one, <laughs> this one was funny. My my one, not the HIV. <laughs> segue that a little yeah. bit better. Um, <laughs> yeah, you may want to work on that one. <laughs> <laughs> when a South Carolina man got hit with strong Waffle House craving at 3 a.m. on Thursday. He wasn't going to let anything stop him, including an employee who he says was asleep when he got there. Alex Brown told WIS TV that he walked over to the West Columbia restaurant because he couldn't sleep after seeing no other workers on the premises and apparently not wanting to disturb the napping person. Bowen decided to take matters into his own hands. He headed back to the kitchen and whipped up a late night snack for himself documenting his culinary adventures in a Facebook post that's gone viral. These pictures, this dude's so excited with himself in the kitchen cooking. <laughs> Employees on the table snoozing away. <laughs> Probably not anymore. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, quote, got hot, uh, got hot on the grill with a double Texas bacon cheesesteak melt with extra pickles. Uh, when I was done, I cleaned the grill, collected my ill-gotten sandwich, and rolled on out. He admitted to ABC News, I was pretty inebriated. Um, <laughs> Bowen added that he later returned. He to the has the same eight. face in all the pictures, with the exception of the does. tongue sticking out on that one. Um, Bowen added that this is Southern hospitality, by the way. He added that later he returned to the restaurant to pay for the sandwich. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a Waffle House spokesperson told WIS TV that the sleeping employee was suspended <laughs> for a week. Um. Bowen is apparently not in any trouble for his actions. In a statement obtained by multiple news outlets, however, the chain noted that for safety reasons, customers should never have to be behind the counter. The statement also mentioned the possibility of Bowen getting a job with the company since he obviously has some cooking <laughs> skills. Um, first of all, I'm worried about safety. You know, what, what, he wouldn't be back there if Homeboy was away. Right. You know what I mean? Like, stay up. And if was, was, job. was there only one person? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Cause like, you know what? I actually feel bad for the worker. You know what it probably was? Motherfuckers calling out. Yeah, not going to their shift, and he's the only one that shows yeah, up. He's... And the supervisor's like, "Look, bro, that's you. Just got to do what you got to do." He looks like he has books or something. That like he's studying for school or something like that, and just kind of he's trying to work his way through medical school and shit. <laughs> right. You know, this is his third job. <laughs> you know, I feel bad for this cat, but um, suspended for a week. At least he wasn't fired. Right. You know, and then how do you, and how do you get suspended from a job? It's like you're in fucking school. <laughs> but this dude looks like he's having fun. <laughs> he's having a good old time. And that was that was cool that he went back to pay for yeah. it. Like most well, people, he probably like, Fuck he, you. he probably uh, he probably checked out his uh, Facebook and went like, oh shit, oh did I pay? I better go back there and pay. <laughs> that's, what that's what happens when you drunk Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he looks drunk too. Yeah. He got them sleepy eyes, like, bruh, I'm gonna make this sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe all he made was probably like grilled cheese. <laughs> no, he made, I, I already said it. No, I'm kidding. Okay? I know, I know. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, because like you don't, like you see a partial of what he made, but you don't see like, like he didn't do a true <laughs> yeah. Instagram he post. Say, like <laughs> he did say he, he made this complicated thing. It was probably like two fucking burnt pieces of bacon <laughs> and some turkey. <laughs> <laughs> you're like oh this looks good i'll throw that in there oh this one with that ah, it, it, it couldn't hurt <laughs> throw that in there <laughs> uh but that's it yeah that's it for our show guys hopefully your christmas shopping will be great and if it is great or not great please rate and review okay <laughs> let us know how it turned on out <laughs> on anything that lets you rate and review um that helps us out so don't fucking be a dick <laughs> I mean, I love you. Okay. Um, if you want to listen to any of our back catalog, definitely Stitcher, iTunes, iHot Radio, um, maybe for a little <laughs> I know, bit. At least for now. Um, and Google Play Music, as well as our website, thelatesgeeks.com. If you want to suggest stories for this show, you can share them on our Facebook and Google Plus pages. Uh, we're also on Twitter and Instagram under the name The Lazy Geeks. That's all one word. We want some feedback. Okay. 
drop it on the website, lazygeeks.com, or send it to our mailbag at thelazygeeksnetwork at gmail.com. And you can find me on the internet, on Twitter, at a middle-aged geek, Instagram, middle-aged underscore geek. You can check out my other podcast every Wednesday, the Extended Play Movie Podcast. This week, we kick off our uh, Christmas run, which is three episodes, and then we end it with our New Year's Eve. Uh, this week's movie, the original Lethal Weapon from 1987. And uh, you can grab that on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play Music. Follow my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Geek, And you can check out my other musings at themiddleagegeek.com. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm on Twitter at SapienTLG. All right. End quote, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and be sure to tune in on Friday for our Away Team episode. Uh, this one, <laughs> Worf gets it going on. Yeah. As he should, you know. Yeah. Um, also, uh, it, like I said earlier, I am going to be going to the L.A. Auto Show. So I know they have some cool little, like, you know, they'll have, like, Star Trek, Star Wars branded, like, stuff. And I know last time I went, they had, like, the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. car, stuff like that. So if you follow my, um, I will post any geeky related stuff from the L.A. Auto Show on the Lazy Geeks. If you want to check out more of my stuff, you'll be able to check them out on my Instagram, my personal Instagram. That was middleage underscore geek. And um, so you'll be able to check all that stuff out. So uh, that is it for us this week. So until next time, <gasps> peace out. This has been a production of the Lazy Geeks Network. Available only at thelazygeeks.com. Thank you.